in this lesson let's look at two more very important identities so let's look at this one stated in the most general form and slowly get to know the meaning of this expression the question is uh, this is equal to what that's an identity and uh, let me just slowly write down the answer and uh, also in the process we will try to figure a way out of memorizing this so let's just write this only in two variables so that one begins to recognize these expressions so in two variables or in two terms this first bracket is a1 square plus a2 square multiplied by b1 square plus b2 square this is equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 whole square plus an additional term which is the identity and let's look at how I write it down start with a1 don't worry about b1 go to the next index that's 2 b2 now once you write the first term don't worry about the next term it's simple it is a minus sign it's simply the indices interchange so it's going to be a okay, let me write it as b1 a2 squared so this is the identity and it's fairly easy to understand why the LHS and the RHS are equal and what we are really discussing here is how to memorize it now how would this look in this general form and what is important is it's very easy to remember this term it's very easy to remember this term and also this term and now I'll try to figure out to tell you how to remember the last term so I'll write down the last term for this expression and in the process we will end up with a identity that is going to lead us also to one of the greatest inequalities whose application we will try to study in a separate chapter so let's see this is equal to a sum of squares as follows so once again start with a1 and go to b with the higher index and then the next term of course you don't have to worry too much just interchange the index so this is going to be b1 a2 whole square plus continue with a1 and keep doing this until you find a higher index so in this case b3 the next term we don't have to remember it is just b1 a3 whole square and keep doing this for a1 so it goes all the way till a n a1 b n minus b1 a n whole square now start with a2 now and look for an index in b which is higher so this minus b2 a3 whole square and keep continuing for a2 and all the way till a n minus 1 will only have b n which is higher minus b n minus 1 a n and this is going to be the last term the fact that the LHS is equal to RHS is fairly believable if you look at what are the terms which are matching with the terms on the left hand side so this particular identity is very nice when you realize that RHS is obviously always greater than or equal to zero and that leads to an inequality since the RHS is a sum of squares and always greater than or equal to zero we can say that the LHS is always greater than or equal to zero and that leads to the famous Cauchy-Schwarz inequality so I'll just write it down 
the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality or maybe yes let me save some time to erase it I'll just copy back the expression once again now the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality says that this particular expression is therefore always greater than or equal to zero and this would imply that sigma e i square where i ranges from 1 to n plus sigma b j square where j ranges from 1 to n a, I'm sorry it is multiplication so let me just write this carefully is always greater than or equal to sigma a k b k k ranges from 1 to n so this expression on the top written in a very impressive way in shorthand summation notation is the famous cauchy schwarz inequality so just to write the formula also in a stylish form and simply say sigma ai square multiplied by sigma bj square minus sigma ak bk is equal to now watch how i write this sigma e i b j minus b i a j whole square and include all those terms such that i is strictly greater less than j so this is a neat way of writing around the entire expression that we wrote down in the previous slide so with this um, let us conclude with one very popular example uh, using this formula just to reinforce this formula in our minds we'll have a separate big lesson on the use of this inequality which is also known as cauchy schwarz inequality so let me get to the problem the problem says that very popular problem actually the problem says that if m is a integer which is equal to sum of two squares and n is also an integer which is equal to sum of two squares then prove that prove that the product m n is also equal to the sum of two squares very popular problem which is an obvious proof due to the identity we just discussed so let's see it's given that m is equal to a1 square plus a2 square n is equal to b1 square plus b2 square and m n which is therefore equal to a1 square plus a2 square multiplied by b1 square plus b2 square is obviously equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 whole square plus a1 b2 this is just the identity that we just learnt b1 a2 whole square which is clearly the sum of two squares this is the first square and this is the second square so now we are done with this identity before we close this lesson let's look at another very popular factorization problem so this previous problem should count as an identity rather than a factorization but let's get back to one more problem which is purely to deal with factorization and this too leads to a very uh, well uh, just a special case of a very important inequality but let's look at the factorization of this expression which is equal to a function of x y z 
and uh, it does uh, look symmetric so let's uh, so one can actually give a very beautiful way of reaching to the factorization with symmetry as the base but i think we should discuss this topic separately instead we'll just give you a brute force method to arrive at the end answer which is looks very good very symmetric it's actually equal to x plus y plus z multiplied by x square plus y square plus z square minus xz minus yz minus xz so this is the answer now how does one justify this well uh, let's just get to it by brute force in this above function if you substitute x is equal to minus y minus z you will find that f of x y z is actually equal to zero and then by the factorization theorem we understand that x plus y plus z is a factor and of course um, as we've been saying all together if you get one factor the other factor is purely by division so with this we can at least think about one way of getting to this answer now do you really want me to verify this well it wouldn't take much time so let us substitute this minus y plus z into the expression minus y plus z whole cube plus y cube plus z cube minus or uh, should i say plus 3 into y plus z into yz now is this equal to zero of course it will be because we know that the expansion of this is simply going to be y cube plus z cube plus 3yz into y plus z and you can see that uh, there is a minus here and there all the terms remaining terms are all plus and the same thing so it's definitely equal to zero so what where are we right now we have just proved that this is the factorization okay now there is one more very nice rewriting or just uh, important rearrangement which is worth remembering now, if you look at this um, this expression this part of the second bracket this can be neatly rewritten as watch this x plus y whole square okay um, or rather x minus I'm sorry x minus y whole square plus divided okay plus y minus z whole square plus z minus x whole square and the whole thing divided by 2 so you can easily verify that this second bracket can be rewritten like this and this is equal to x plus y plus z multiplied by this what is equal to this this expression now watch here that this is always strictly greater than or equal to 0 and the reason is that this is a sum of squares and in particular if if we assume that x y z are all positive numbers all greater than or equal to zero then rhs is definitely greater than or equal to zero for whatever reasons we have given if that is the case we can say then the following statement that if x y z are positive then lhs is strictly positive and that gives us an inequality which is worth writing down so let me just write this down the inequality is that the LHS here x cube plus y cube plus z cube is strictly it's not strictly greater than or equal to 3xyz as long as okay if if xyz is positive 
if x, y, z are positive numbers. Now this you can see is nothing but the so-called this is the arithmetic mean of the cubes. The arithmetic mean is greater than equal to x, y, z which is the geometric mean of x cube by cube z cube so geometric mean is cube root of the product x cube y cube z cube and this is of course equal to x y z so what do we have here arithmetic mean of three positive numbers is always greater than equal to geometric mean and we all know that this is a great inequality in fact this inequality is true for any number of variables n number of variables and we will have occasion to deal with this topic in inequalities but we have just given a proof of the arithmetic geometric inequality for three variables and that has come through this identity so with that we close uh, our group of lessons our first group of lessons on factors and identities and one will look at a few other topics before we return to this never-ending topic of factorization. Alright, thank you.